Bibles and turn it to Hebrews, the thir- 11th chapter, the 13th through the f- 16th verse. Let's all stand for the reading. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to trying to collect myself because last time I was here, uh, God just changed things and went a whole different way. And it was different. It was different. But it was yet God's will and his his desire for that time. And I feel something stirring here today. And I'm trying to stay according to the scripture and the topic that he gave me. Pre, that I was, I should say, that I was researching earlier, but we'll see where we go. But Hebrew 11th chapter, 13 through 16th verse reads thus, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but not having seen them afar off were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have the opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise his name. You may be seated. You may be seated. And as many of you know, the topic or the context of this right here um, is talking about the people of Israel. And by extension, us as Christians. And at this time, the Israelites, as all of us know, had been enslaved in Egypt for many, many years. They were there and because of Because they had turned their back on God, God allowed them to be encaptured and enslaved with the Egyptians for for a long time. But as they were there with the Egyptians in their hometown, in their home, away from where they were really from, they suffered much persecution. Much, much persecution. We all heard the stories about how they were beat and tormented on every hand, every single day. How they were slain and killed. We talked about, we know about how in the Bible it says that even at one point, the Egyptians got afraid of them. So they started to take their children and the firstborn of their males, and they begin to slaughter them. And that's the type of environment that the the Israelites had to live in and that they had to thrive in. And again, when we look at the Israelites, it's always referring to us as Christians and the things that we go through as well. And God was just saying that that's us. That's what we go through. Some of us are going through some serious trials and tribulations right now in our lives. We have these things that we're we're suffering through. But God was saying to me, as I was talking about the research in this, that, you know, even though we go through these things and we feel that we're not going to make it, at the last hour, at the last minute when we say, God, I need thee, he always shows up just in the nick of time. Just as we feel like we're going under for the last and final count, somehow he shows up just right on time. Just right on the time. And that's what happened with the, with the Israelites. They were going through some serious, some serious torment. And they began to pray and they began to ask God for deliverance. And for a long time, they felt as though nothing was happening, that the status quo continued to be the same. But eventually, God heard their prayer. 
And when he heard their prayer, he sent Moses to de- deliver them. Now, I was ta- thinking about this, and um, I started thinking about how when we're in situations, at the time of the situations, it's overwhelming. And we feel like, we, you know, that the situation is going to go on forever. But God has perfect timing. He knows when the time is right. But I started reflecting back in the context of this to a job that I, that I had before I started working at this job I'm at now. And in this job that I was at previously, um, I had been working there for about a year. And I wasn't doing anything special. I was just being who God has called me to be, trying to be the best employee that I can be with the great, through the grace of God. But because of my personality, because of my character, because of my work ethic, one of the managers there started to show favor towards me. And as he started to fa- show favor towards me, he started trying to bring me around where he would go. So whenever he would go to a meeting, he would just say, I, I want you to come with me. And then when he started to go, one time they went to this, this off-site meeting, and I got there, I was like, where are we going? He's like, don't worry about it, just come with me. We gotta go to a meeting. So we traveled to this place and we get there, it's all the executives in all the Northeast are there. All the vice presidents, all the, some executives, and I'm like, what in the world am I doing here? <laughs> I was like, I do not fit in in this place right here. And they were doing all kinds of exercises because they were trying to figure out where the company needed to go next. So they brought in some special guru who was going to talk to them about how to how to visualize where you want to take the company. And we're going to do these five steps to this and these four steps to that and these three steps to this. And I was sitting like, this is how we decide where the company is going to go. I'm like, boy, I'm surprised any companies get anywhere. But it, nonetheless, they, God had showed me favor, and I started to go with this play, person. But as I was going through this stuff, my children started to get older, and they started getting to a place where... I felt I just need to be closer and be more around them. So I started praying, God, okay, I know that something's happening here, but God, I need to be near my family. I need to be closer to home. And the other thing that was a problem is they didn't pay much. Sure, they wanted to make me do a lot more stuff, but at the end of the day, it's about, okay, how much are you going to pay me to do these things? And I was like, God, I need a raise. I need a promotion. I need something, Lord Jesus. You got to do something. So I sat there, and I continued to pray about the situation. And eventually, I I got an opportunity from a guy I used to work with. And he said, yeah, in Nashua, we got, Dell just opened up a branch in Nashua. And they're looking for all these developers. He's like, if you come, I know you can get in because we worked before together, and he knows what I could do. And he's like, yeah, just come over. And I'm telling you, they're they're giving out good money. And when he, he had me at good money. He had me at good money, and I was like, okay, I'll go in for an interview. And I went in for the interview, and it was the most difficult interview that I have ever been in. I mean, it was the first, first meeting I went in, there were five guys. I go into a room, they're all sitting on the other side of the table, and I sit down on one side, and they just start asking me questions. They're just coming from everywhere. I'm trying to answer their questions, and they're like, okay, now I need you to go on the whiteboard, and I need you to write out this diagram. I need you to show me how you would solve this problem. So I solve the problem, and they're like, okay, why did you do that? Why did you do this? Why this? And they just continued to grill me. And it was the most excruciating interview that I've ever been through. And then after I did that interview, they called me back for another interview where I met with my manager. And I thought, usually by the time you get to the second interview and you meet with the manager, like, all right, I'm cool, I'm all set, I got the job. But I went in there, and he started asking me questions. And his questions were worse than the other five questions. And I'm like, good Lord, what is going on in here? I'm like, maybe this job isn't for me. Maybe that's all this is about. Maybe I, I began to doubt myself a little bit. I began to doubt the situation, and I said, you know, and I started giving myself an out. You know how we do when we're not sure anymore if we did a good job and we might get cut anyway. And then we start saying, I really don't think this job is for me. Yeah, I started doing that. I started doubting myself. And I said, you know what? Traveling from Massachusetts really isn't that bad after all. (laughs) But honestly, it was just the fear and the doubt started to creep in a little bit. And I started thinking, yeah, maybe this isn't for me. And then I went home and I thought about the interview and I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I said that. I messed that thing totally up. 
And then about a week later, I got a call and they said, we need you to come in for one more interview. And I'm like, how many times do they need to talk to one person before they need the desire they want them in their company? But they wanted to talk to me one more time. So I went in and I, this time I talked with um, the vice president of the company. And he started just asking me general questions about who I am, what I am, what do I believe in, and those sort of things. And I just started telling them about myself. I said, I'm a born-again Christian. I believe in God. I believe in family. I said, I work and I like what I do, but my, my main priority is my family. And he's like, I can respect that. I really do. I re really respect that. But as I was talking to him and talking about what I believe and what I do and don't do, I looked behind me and they, across the entire wall are all these alcohols that, that, that he has. And, behind, and in front of that is an open bar that he has. And I'm like, okay, what in the world am I getting myself into? So needless to say, so things went forward. And after all the doubting and all the, 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 the thoughts of, okay, maybe this isn't for me, eventually they called me back and they said, okay, yeah, we, we're going to offer you this position. So I, I ended up taking the position and I said, God, you know what, I'm going to step out. I'm, this is a little bit different than what I'm used to, but God, I'm going to go forward and I'm going to do what you want me to do. So I took the position. And when I took the position, I began to get comfortable with it. And I was really happy that I made the decision. You know, but what God was showing me through this experience is that sometimes as we're going through the various phases of our life and various trials or tribulations or ta tasks that he has put upon us, we have to have a certain mindset. We have to have a certain mindset and believe what God has told us to do. Because if we don't believe and if we don't have it set in our mind that, we, that God has told us to do these things, then at some point we're going to begin to doubt. And once that doubt starts to creep into our mind, then we start wondering whether we made the right decision all over again. And it's funny how when God is first dealing with us and we're all excited and we're all amped up or we're in church and, the, and the, somebody prays for us and say, you're going to do such and such. At that moment, we got all this energy and we believe and yay, God, yay. Yes, God has called me. I'm going to be this and that. And yes, it's going to be good. But as soon as persecution comes or some adversity starts to come your way or things aren't quite as nice as you thought they were when you're looking at the other side and the grass was much, much greener, and then you get there and you're like, wow, there's a lot of weeds in here. This is nothing but a weed patch. You start to realize, okay, you start wondering, well, did God really call me to do this? Did God speak to me when I was over there and I was praying? Maybe he was the devil. You know he is the prince of the air. <laughs> and maybe he was just whistling Dixie in the air and I was just catching his tune. But no, we just have to believe and know the voice of God for our lives. Because if you do not know the voice of God for your life, then it is easy for you to be led astray. And I talked to many, several people. And one of the things that I continue to talk to people about it's more than just one person is knowing God's voice, yeah. knowing God's voice. And it's like everything when it comes to our Christian life. One person might get it one way and another person may get it another way. Just because one person says, I hear it this way or I see it that way or I receive it this way. That does not mean that you're going to receive it the same exact way. And you know what? That doesn't make the way you received it any less than the way they received it. God could come to them and speak to them directly from on high and stand in front of them and talk to them and tell them exactly what he wants them to know. And to you, it might just be a still, small voice. To others, it might be a vision. To some, it could just be a thought that come, pops up into your mind. But when that thought comes into your mind, it bears witness to your spirit. You never know how God is going to deal with you. But the important thing is you have to start to begin to become sensitive to the way in which God deals with you. If you can do that, then you will have confidence when it's time for God to direct you in your life. Because it's very important that you do that. Because when you don't have confidence in what God is doing in your life, then it becomes so much easier for you to fall a prey, a prey to what the, de the devil's attacks. And like I said, when the adversities start to come, 
you, then you will start to question what God has said to you already before. So once again, it's the point that I was making is that it's very important that we know God's voice and know how he speaks to you. And when he speaks to you, you have to grab hold to that and you have to hold on to it with the utmost confidence and security that what God said he's going to do, he will do for you. So one of the things that I want when I was talking about the message and I was like, God, OK, how do you want me to explain this to the people? And what he what was coming for, what he showed me is that once we start a process and God moves us from point A to B. We go through that trial, we become successful. We go through the next trial, we become successful. We go through the next trial and we become successful. He was saying, some point you're going to face, face adversity. But when you face that adversity, how are you going to handle it? How are you going to overcome that thing? So God was showing me this, this example. So let me let me get myself uh, let me get myself someone to help me illustrate this. Okay, when we're dealing with something and we're we're at a crossroads in our lives, or, and we have to make a decision. The question is this: I'm facing this way. I've already come from there. Do I go forward, or do I go backwards? You have to. Ask, you're going to be in that position. Some at some point in your life, you're going to be in that position. But the thing that you can't do is you can't look back. You can't look back. You've already been through that. You don't need to look back again. You need to stay looking forward. So let me, um, okay, let me have Justin come forward. My nephew, he has to come forward. So I call. <laughs> okay. So we're walking this way, right? And he's here, he's going through all these trials, he's through all these tribulations, and he's facing this way. Okay, if I tell him, okay, you're at this point, and you have to decide whether you're going to go back or you're going to go forward. And you decide you're going to, and you're not sure what you're going to do when you, and I say, okay, go backwards. Go back where you came from. What do you do? Go back to your seat. Stop. <laughs> what did he have to do before he could go back? That's exactly right. Go back. You can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before you can go backwards, you have to turn around and look at where you came from. You have to turn and look where you are, where, what you come through. You have to say in your mind, okay, I'm here and I'm going forward and I think I can make it. But when the doubt comes in and the adversities hit you, you start wondering. And at that time, that's when we start to look back. That's when we start to turn back and look at those things that we were in before. And we start to have doubt and we start to look at those things that were. And all of a sudden, those things start looking pretty good to us. We start looking back at the old things that we used to do, and we start saying, well, hey, that was kind of fun. You know, it wasn't so bad, and maybe, you know, maybe if I just go back, I'll be all right. I don't want to deal with that. And we start looking at that, and we say, okay, I'm going to go back here. But the Lord said that God was telling me that we can't turn around and look back. We can't look back. We've already done that, and he's already delivered us from that. So we can't look back there anymore. We have to go move forward. Keep moving forward. And I was saying, Lord, that's true. That's true. A lot of times we have such revisionist history. We've gone through that situation or maybe we've gone from that place, even me and my job, when I started looking back at that job, as I started to go, even in, recently in the current job I'm at, Things started getting a little bit hectic. The company got bought by another company, and the environment changed. They started say they were going to have layoffs, but what they said, decided to do instead is they said, okay, we're going to allow people to opt out, and we'll give them a package. So they expected a few people to leave and take the package. A third of the company accepted the <laughs> package and left. And I'm not talking about the everyday guys. I'm talking about all the, a lot of the executives took the package and left the company. And we were all looking around because now all the managers are gone and we're looking around saying, oh my gosh, who's gonna steer the ship? 
<laughs> and now we're all looking at each other like, I'm not doing it. And I, at that point, when I looked around and everybody's saying, I don't know how to do this, I'm like, uh-oh, I better refresh my resume because <laughs> I don't think I want to be here anymore. And as that happened, I started thinking about it, and I was like, man, if I had stayed in that other company, man, I'd probably be a principal engineer right now, and I'd probably be getting nice bonuses and perks and stuff like that. But again, that's what the fear started coming in again in my own personal life, and I started looking back at where I was and starting misremembering, actually, how things were when I was in that situation. And I forget that when I was in that situation, I was starting to get miserable, and I started complaining, and I was saying, God, get me out of here. But now that I'm in another situation, and it's starting to get a little tough, now I'm saying, well, I think I want to go back to that one. And God said, no, I've already delivered you from there. Why would you go back? You've already stayed, fought your way through there. Don't now go back there and start all over again. This isn't the game of sorry where they hit you and they slide you all the way back to the beginning again and you got to work your way back. This is not how God works. He delivers us for a reason. He delivered you for a reason. We fought, we cried, we, slob we, 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 we slobbered, we, we did all these things to get through the situation. And now we are free. He said, if you are free, you're free indeed. If you're free indeed, then why is there a need to go back there once again? It's time to keep looking forward. It's time to look forward and don't go back to where we were at. And what God was showing to me, that what tends to happen when we start to look back, is that looking back is not always a bad thing. But he said that there's three reasons for which we should be looking back. There are three reasons for which we should be looking back. The first reason that we, we might look back is because, let me do this, let me do this. Because I know I'm a visual person and I need, I need to look at things sometimes. So I'm going to create a pi picture for you. So this is my life. This is the trial when my son fell down the stairs when he was an infant. And he hit his head on the concrete. And his eyes rolled in the back of his head. And we had to rush him to the emergency room. We weren't sure if he was going to survive. This is when I was having trouble in my marriage. And I was saying, God, is this for me? Is this the right thing? Did you call me to do this? Is this the right person? And this, all those same ifs, 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 ifs. And now we have doubts. This is when my daughter got her driver's license a couple, about a month ago. <laughs> this is that job I was telling, talking about when God had finally delivered me and gave me a new job. And now I'm starting to wonder, is that the right place to be? And this is me today, standing at the precipice of another decision. Now, I'm standing right here at the precipice of this decision and wondering whether I, what I should do. But God was saying that there's a couple reasons that we should be looking back. Not all of them are bad. But it's all about the perspective in which you're looking back on those tasks that you came through, on those trials that you came back from. Now, there's times when I look back in this thing and I'm saying I'm feeling a little bit depressed, I'm feeling a little bit weak, or I'm, I feel like I might not be able to make it. And, Lord, I don't know if I can go through this any longer. And you say, he says, look back over here at this step right here. Remember when you were saying, God, I can't make it, and you came to the altar and you cried, and you said, God, I don't think I'm going to make it. And he said, you can make it because you're strong enough. And when you're looking at your child and how they've grown up, and they're nice and tall and big and strong, and they got all the faculties of their mind, and you're saying, God, you did that. Or when you're looking back at your marriage, and everything is wonderful, and you feel good, and you feel confident, and you're feeling like you're on top of the world, and God said, yeah, Yes, I did that. And you look back at the starting point, and when you were there and you said, God, I don't think I'm going to make it. And you look back and God says, now look where you are now. Look where I have bought you from. And you stand right here and then you say, let me give myself another accomplishment. And you lay it down and you say, now I'm here today. This is where I am today. 
And God said, in that case, okay, look back. Okay, it's all right for you to look back. You're not looking back with a mind of woe is me, but you're looking back so that you could say, yeah, God showed me how to get through. God provided me with the strength that I needed to get through. And in that case, God said, yes, go ahead and look back. Okay, so we got one case in which we can look back. And God said, okay, it's okay for you to look back and draw strength from your prior experiences. He said, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I said, okay, God, that's, that's, that's good. Thank you for showing me that. And he said, okay, there is another reason why we go through these experiences. Okay, okay. Um, Sister Ashley, you come in. You come and help. Oh, actually, I better take a boy. I better take a um, Darian. <laughs> He's like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to take Brother Darian. Yeah, I was looking at all of you. Okay. So this is his life. Okay. And he's laying down these te- monuments from where he came from. And God is delivering him through certain things in his life. And he's walking along his path. And he's getting here, and he's getting, becoming victorious, and he's getting to these new steps. And he gets to this point, and God will show me, these are him, this is him coming through his trials and his, term, and his tribulations. And he's in a different place altogether. But every time he gets through one of these, he gets a little bit more confidence. But sometimes we come to a point in our lives where we hit something that we don't come, quite understand. And maybe at this point in his life, he's here because he just got married. And he's having difficult times in his relationship. And he's standing here saying, how can I make it through? I don't think I can make it through, God. I'm not going to make it. I'm about to give up. God, what do I do? How do I do it? And God is saying, don't worry. You're not alone. And God says, at that moment, he says, you may not know how to get through, but look right here at this person right here. He's already gone through it before. He's already got his testimony. He's already laid down the tracks for you to go through. And all you have to do to make it to to your next step is you just need to get here. And what do you have to do to get from there to there? What would you do if you want to get here? Now, well, what you want, what I'm going to tell you what you need to do. What you need to do is to get from here to here. You can't just walk. You got to jump. You got to leap. There you go. That's what you got to do. And you know what he just did? He took a leap of faith right there. He just took a leap of faith in his life. And because he trusted in God and took that leap of faith, he has now has direction for his life. He saw in his mind that other person that has gone through what he went through. And he looked and he said, God, if they can make it, I can make it. And that was the leap of faith that he needed to get past his situation. And now he is now past where he once was. So God was saying those tribulations that we go through, and as we go through, it may seem like there's no reason, God, that I needed to go through that. God says, it's not just about you. It's not always about you. Stop being so selfish. Sometimes you got to go through so that the next person has a way to get through. Sometimes we have to suffer so that we could drag the next person along. And God said, and once that happens, we have to take the leap of faith. When you don't know what's the next thing to do, you got to look to those that have been there and have gone there and have been through it. And then you have to say, God, if they can do it, I can do it. And then you take that leap of faith. Thank you, Darian. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So God is saying to us, we can't despise when we're in the middle of situations. We take it the wrong way. Our mind is all messed up. We're just, we're looking at it from the wrong perspective. We got to look at these situations and know that God knows what he's doing. I'm sure when he's sitting here and he's in this situation and he's facing this like this and he's saying, God, I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't know this, that, and the other thing. And he's about to go down and he's, and he's crying and he's done all that he could do. He's looking at it and he's saying, God, this is the last step. Where did I go? What do I do? And God's saying, 
Boy, all you have to do is turn your head and look this way and look at the situation just a little bit differently, and now there was a way for you to escape. And God said, that's where you are. You just have to turn your head a little bit. you got to look at the situation a little bit differently. And when you look at it a little bit differently like God wants you to, he will make that provision for you. He will make that ram in the bush for you. But we just have to change the way we think. We have to change our perspective. And know that God is not going to leave you alone on an island. But God is going to definitely make sure that there is a way for you to get, get through your situation. So God said that there are, two, there are several ways, like we said. One is, again, to recap, one is a negative way. One is us looking back on these things because we're afraid to move forward from where we're at. We don't want to move forward. And we, like, the, like, the, like, like they say all the time, the, we're more comfortable with the devil we know versus the devil we don't know. And that's what happens. A lot of us remember back to this time and they're saying, well, when I was at that job, you know, yeah, you know, I, was getting, I could get raises and I could get bonuses and I could get promotions and blah, 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 and things are going. But we forget about all the negative things that happen. We stop forgetting about all the, all the things that were going on in that situation that made us want to leave in the first place. It's like the Israelites, right? They were good. They were they went through this whole experience, through this whole ordeal, and God finally got them out into, into the wilderness, and he started providing for them. He provided a cloud by day to keep them out of the heat of the sun. Then he provided them with a pillar of fire. I mean, a pillar of fire? Come on, who does that? So that they could be warm. I mean, what kind of... Now, that's a God that he cares about you that much, that he's going to follow around you with a pillar of fire. I mean, that's the type of God that provides for us in the midst of our situations. Now, this was not the place where they were supposed, meant to stay. They were never supposed to stay in the wilderness. God had made a promise to them. He had created a, a, a land for them to go that he said was filled with milk and honey. And that's where they were supposed to go. But they got in the middle of the, of the wilderness and they began to complain about the situation and where they were and what they were going through. They started worrying about what's going to happen next. And they started to doubt whether God was still leading them in the right place. But God is saying, you know, in the situation, when you're in your situation, again, you have to have the right mindset. You got to realize that as you're sitting here in this situation, and he's already promised to get you there, that you can't give up in this place. You have to continue to... Have faith in the word that he gave you earlier, like we talked about. You have to remember when he spoke to you and told you to take this path. And when you remember that he's done that, then we can continue to strive forward past those situations, those circumstances. So as the Israelites started to go through, they finally made it to the, pro to the promised land that was there for them. And they were sitting there on the precipice of their, of their, of their promise. And a lot of us are in that situation or come to that situation where we've made it out and we're right at the point where we're ready to receive that victory. But at that point, the devil's not going to make it easy. And nor does God want it to be easy. Because if everything came easy, then we wouldn't know how to appreciate anything. We just take it for granted. But as they're sitting there and the Egyptian, I mean, the, and the Israelites are sitting there and they're sitting there and they're, they're looking at the promised land and they could see all the benefits that are there. They could see that God has not lied to them, but yet he really has prepared a place for them to be. But yet they look back at this, at this situation and they say, OK, what do we have to do to get in there? What's going to be the cost? Because there's always a cost. You got to do something to get from here to there. And God was, and as they came and they sent the people, the spies in, and they came for the reports, and they came back and some of the spies said, nope, we can't go there. They got giants, the big giants, they're scary giants, and I think we'd be better off going back into the wilderness. And whose report did they believe? They didn't repeat, we believe the two that said, no, I think we can go in and we can possess this land. I think, we can, I think we can win this land. I think we can win this battle. And you know what these guys didn't do? At this point, 
they didn't look back at these things that God had brought them from. They forgot about the fact that God had brought them through the, the Red Sea and collapsed the seas upon Pharaoh's men. They forgot about the fact that they were given manna from heaven. They forgot about the fact that they were being fed, given water from a rock. They forgot about all these different things that God had done to, from, to get them from there to there. And all of a sudden they think that they get here and it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You're right at the point where you're going to get your victory. That's where things are the hardest. That's when you struggle the most. But you got to stand still and you got to say, God, I know that you have done this for me in the past. And I know that you will do it for me again. And that's when you have to say, God, I'm going to stand on what you've done for me. And you got to draw on those experiences and use that to propel you forward. And what they did is they decided not to do that. They decided not to do that. And next thing you know, they found themselves going backwards. Brother, you got to help me out here, man. <laughs> there you go. That's what I need right there. But God has blessed them and brought them to the promise. They are sitting at the precipice of their own land. They've been sitting out in somebody else's land for a long time. They've been pilgrims and strangers in a land for a long time. They've been tormented, and persecuted, and reviled for a long time. And here they are, sitting there, looking what God promised them, and they decide that they want to go back. How many of you are looking at that situation and ready to go back now? God is saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't believe the report of the negative people around you. Don't re believe the report that the enemy is trying to put in your head. Don't believe that, but believe these things that you have gone through, these trials that you have gone through, these testimonies that you have. You have to draw on them and use those. He said, that's what you need to do. That's what we all need to do. And I said, God, yes, I understand. That's what I need to do. I need to draw upon that. And God said, you know what happened? The Israelites ended up going. We all know the story. They chose not to go in, and they said, we're going to go back. We're going to go back and to where we came from. They went from, from the final point back, to the, back into the middle of what they were at. And they said, we'll just live here. We're cool with it. And God said, that was not what I intended you. That is not what I intended for you. I had better for you. I had better expectations for you. I had a better place for you to be. And they gave up on the promise of God. And you know, a lot of other gods lowercase g gods might have let that be the end of the story but you know what even though that they didn't get a place to go into that promise even when you go back and you may have been in a situation and you might not have passed that test and you might be back here God doesn't give up on us God doesn't just turn his back on us and give up on us at that time he could have just cut off the Israelites and said that's it you're done I'll find me a new people he said, you're done, you're cut off. But no, that's not what God did. You know what God did? He allowed them to stay in where they were. But he still went away and created a place that they would have to live in eternity where they no longer had to be pilgrims anymore. But he provided a place that was made of milk and honey and the streets are made of gold and said that if you still live the life that I, I asked you to live, then you will be successful and you will have a home in the sky when the time comes. So no matter what you go through, God still makes a way for you to escape. God always has a plan. God always has a plan. And you know what else about that happens sometimes when you're going through these situations? Sometimes when you get a really tough situation and you're, and you're right back here, and you make your way, and you get here, and you're standing at this one, and you're saying, God, how in the world am I supposed to get here? How do I get over to that one right there? And God said, you know what? You have to change your perspective. At this point, you're, 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 you're weak. You don't have the confidence. You don't really feel like you can make it. Even though he's done a lot for you, you don't th think you can make it. And God said, go back. Look at those memorials that you built. And God said, go back to this one and look what you were in. And go back to this one and look what you were at. And draw strength from these places. And then when you get from here and you got that strength, you can make a run and jump. And you can, 
make your way to where you are today. And God said, that's what we need to do. We need to get a running start sometimes because we got situations in our life that are not so simple. God said we have to draw from our previous experiences and we got to use them to propel us forward. And once we do that, we can make that leap once again of faith in our lives, in our lives. And God said that's where we have to be. But the question that he was proposing to me that we are all in a situation right now in our lives and we, we don't think we can make it. And what, God, what happened to me in my situation when I was telling you about that job is that I went through all that and things weren't great at my job and I wanted to give up. And I started reminiscing about the old job and what it was doing. And then one day I received a phone call from my other group because we used to do lunch every now and then. And they called me up and they're like, hey, can we all, can we get together and do lunch? And I said, okay, yeah. So I get together and I go to the, to the, lunch, to the place with the group and I get there, and I was like, hey, how's everybody doing? I thought it was just a normal get-together. And then all of a sudden, I said, what's up? And they got, like, well, we just wanted to find out if you guys had any job openings over at your new place. <laughs> and I was like, what in the world? And he said, the company got sold to another company, and they're moving the entire operation to North Carolina. And all 10 of the group of the people that I used to hang with were going to either have to move to North Carolina, or they were going to be out of a job. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now, what if I would have went back? What if I would have given up when I was standing on the job I'm at now and went back there because I felt comfortable back there? If I had given, back, given up at that point, I would be without a job. I'd be right back out there looking to find another job. But I stayed where I was. I stayed where I was, and I forgot something that I was supposed to bring with me today. And what it was is the mail came in the other, just yesterday, and the kids brought something into me, and they're like, oh, this is for you. And I was like, what is this? And I opened it up, and I looked at it, and it was, a, and it was like this, this clear crystal plaque, and it said, five-year anniversary at Dell. And I said, and they were like, congratulations. And I was like, wow, praise God. Praise God I stuck it out, and now I have literally, I have my plaque. I have my memorial to tell me, you stay through. You stay through the situation, and you've been blessed. And now you're sitting here, and now you have your victory. And God has blessed me physically with, with this thing. And I'm going to hang that up as, the, as my testimony of how God allowed me to stay the course. And as I stayed through the course, God blessed. And he provided, and he made a way. So when I was, what, what God was just wanting me to continue to impress upon each and every one of us is that even though we're in the situation and even though it seems like there's no way out or there's no escape, you got to realize if you are all the way out here, sitting at this point here, you got to look back and say, God, I've come through way too much to go back right now. God, you delivered me through way too many things for me to give up and turn tail and run. We got to make up in our mind that we're going to stand through this thing. We got to mean it when we say, for God I live and for God I die. We got to mean it when we say that, God, I believe in what you have told me. We got to believe it when we say we believe in the promises of God. Because if we believe in the promises of God, then we won't turn. We will stay foot and we will stay faithful to his word. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give in and don't surrender. Because if you just hold on just a little while longer... God is going to show up and he's going to show out like he always does. Because God is not a God that he should lie. And God does not like to fail. In fact, he doesn't fail. So you can give up on that. He will make sure that you will be successful. But all you have to do is do your part. And all your part is just to stand strong and see the salvation of the Lord. 
So I'm telling you right now, if you're in that situation in your life, if you're in that place, and even if you feel like you're all alone, know that you're not. God is right there beside you. In most cases, he's not beside you. He's standing there holding you up in his arms saying, don't worry, we can make it. I know you feel like you're making this jump right here, but in reality, you have nothing to do with that jump. That is all God, all God, every day, every day. And all we have to do is just trust. All we have to do is trust and believe. Trust and believe.